I'm Lisa from Innovation for Agriculture and I'm here in Devon with Jack talking about all things cows and COVID related. Hello, um, I'm Jack Monday. And I'm David Monday. Jack's and dad. <laughs> not, not, not his older brother, which you know, <laughs> could be confused. Yes. <laughs> and um, we're milking 250 autumn calving cows uh, in mid Devon and we also run a small uh, milk processing company as well. Well, I'm a second generation dairy farmer. My parents um, got into farming uh, 50, 60 years ago and um, kind of I got brought into it as well and, uh, and we, we enjoyed the, the experience of, of running a farm and we kind of were tenants and now we own some of the farm and we still rent some ground. So it's an ongoing thing and then we were fortunate that one of my sons, Jack, here decided that he'd like to go farming as well. Um, so we, we, we've kind of innovated or we've We've changed our farming system over the years and now have become uh, specific dairy farms. Uh, and that seems to be the, what works for us in the area that we're in. Um, yeah, I came home in 2012 um, and kind of had a predominantly awesome calving herd, milking about 160 cows back then. Um, and then we've kind of progressed from there, put in a new milking parlour, um, a few more cubicles, and uh, yeah, got to our 250 cows. Um, so we carve all of the cows in this field, so there's a, another one just to the side of us as well. Um, we carve them all here in the autumn. Um, we bring them in once a day to give them a bit more feed, but this is where the majority of the action happens. We grow the grass uh, slightly longer than we would normally for the milking cows, just to provide a bit more fibre in their diet, and that um, alleviates any health issues they might be more prone to have. And why do you prefer them to carve outside? Uh, it works well for us. We, it's obviously cheaper, but that's not the main reason. It's quite a, we like the fresh air. They get a fresh piece of grass every day. They're um, then fenced off the piece they've had before. So it's always clean, a clean field and it um, stops a lot of the health issues that might be associated with other, other ways of doing it. Right? And you see, you see the results of that in a sort of low infection rate? Yes, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we don't get much in the way of mastitis um, or milk fevers, which would be our two main concerns at calving. Um, the cows kind of get on with it themselves as well, which we find helps a lot and we don't have to interfere. So for about eight or nine months a year, they uh, graze outside in the fields. Um, and then for the winter, sort of three or four months, they stay in the shed, uh, there's cubicles in the shed, they, there's enough for all of them to lie down at once and then there's a feed area back, at, back behind it as well um, where, yeah, where they're fed their winter rations, mainly grass and maize silage. And how do you um, optimise cow comfort and ensure they've got a good bedding area? Um, so we use, uh, there's a concrete base to the cubicles which we then, we did have a mat on but we've actually just purchased some new mattresses which is hopefully uh, meant to be more comfortable and more uh, should encourage the cows to lie down. And, uh, so that would be good. Um, and then, yeah, we, on top of that, we then put sawdust or hydrated lime, which keeps the beds dry, and then sawdust, which provides a bit more comfort and also keeps it dry as well. How have things been with lame cows? Uh, not great. We didn't have a great winter for this, um, but it was. We found out that we had an issue with how much formalin we were putting in our foot bath for the cows. We foot bath them daily um, at three and a half percent formalin, and actually it was only about one percent going in. Uh, sadly, we found out quite late that that was an issue. Um, so we, yeah, probably had our worst winter for a long, long time. But actually, since we've got on top of that problem, it has definitely sorted it out again. So historically you've had very little lameness here in the herd. What would be your top tips for the farm? Um, I think foot bathing daily would be number one. And probably another key thing for us is we've got a bat latch, which is an automatic gate timer. So the cows come in by themselves. We don't have to go and get them. And we're not then pushing them in so they've got their own, been coming at their own pace. And that really saves their feet, I think. A lot of the time I see profit and climate change as very similar things actually you need to be efficient in farming to make profit but you also need to be efficient to not have a greater impact on the environment so the cows are outside as much as we can they're then grazing the grass themselves they then excrete everything outside that's then not got to be stored it's not 
for lack of rising. Um, and then, and it's just the whole cycle is very continuous and non-mechanical. Measure sort of kind of soil fertility, measure grass, and just kind of be as productive as we can. And at the end of the day, we've got lots of trees, lots of grass that are that they are taking the carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it back into the soil. And we measure that in the soil. Um, we learned a lot about not just antibiotics, but what types of antibiotics and what we should and shouldn't be using. Um, we never used any third and fourth generation cephalosporins or fluoroquinolones anyway, but um, it's actually just becoming more aware of what we are using and trying to target what antibiotics we're using. Mastitis really is our, is our main issue. Um, we, we don't use a lot of injectable antibiotics at all. We do selective dry cow therapy and so we only use antibiotics on about, I think it was 34% of the herd last year. Um, should be fairly similar again this year. Right? I saw it on Country File one day and thought it would be a good idea. And then Dave went up to Salisbury and saw one working on a farm and came back and was really enthusiastic and it sort of snowballed from that, didn't it? And yeah. We all went up to Salisbury and saw it working and then sat down and worked it out and figured out a plan and then figured out another plan and then found a location. That was probably the... Yeah, I mean, we always... That's the biggest bit, isn't it? Kind of thought about having one on farm and we could never really make it work. But it was only when Dad went to Salisbury and thought, actually, there's one in a pub car park here. Why, why not take it to the people rather than yeah. trying to get the people to come to you? What sort of questions do the public ask you or want to know? How fresh is the milk? Yep. <laughs> and they're always quite pleased to know that it's that day's milk, you know, that morning's milk. Um, and they almost can't believe it. <laughs> so I, I quite often like to tell them that it was kind of grass yesterday. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And it is, yeah, the, kind of, it, the cows are milked in the morning, that milk is pasteurised right away. Um, I think being open and actually having your farm set up so that if, so that you can say to someone, come and have a look and have nothing to hide, be open and honest and have nothing to hide. And I think that's kind of number one starting yeah. place. And if you are engaging with the public, try and not be filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something we do when we go to the vendor machine, isn't it? We always... Yeah, we always, yeah, always, it's kind of, yeah. it's... Yeah, there's, there's being on the farm and then there's retail and yeah. you kind of have to separate the two to a degree, mm. I think, and which I think we managed to do yeah, yeah, yeah. fairly well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just yeah, talk to people to be honest yeah. as well.